Can we see it? Tell me, can you, yes, can, can you guys see what's on the screen? Yeah, okay, great. Hey, can you hear me okay? Is this volume been all right? Okay, sounds good. Make sure you speak up there, Chris. <clears throat> Chris is a multi-time speaker at Pine Hill. We're super happy to have him back. And uh, yeah, very excited for this talk today about pre-commit. Give it up for Chris. Yay. All right, uh, just yell at me if I uh, fade down and don't speak up too loudly. Uh, my name is Chris Brousseau, and uh, I'm currently a partner at IBM Consulting. I sell cognitive stuff, and uh, prior to that, founder of a company I founded called Surface Owl. Uh, it was all about essentially uh, computational consulting. Uh, this year was a big year for me. I got to go to my very first in-person PyCon. That was a nice change of pace from the virtual things that I've uh, uh, done before and fun fact just so you know it's not all code and and consulting i once brought my team climbing with fuji when i was working in japan so if you look at my talk from last week you'll see some photos but i i forgot to kind of bring those guys in um so today we're going to talk about this stuff we're going to talk about what git hooks are why you might care how you get started i got a couple examples we'll look at and some resources right um the basics so who here uses git Anyone? Ooh. Ah, hey, you are in the right place. Okay, so so we use Git. Uh, Git hooks are simple. They're basically just scripts that run, you know, before, or after anything that happens with Git. Okay, and they're optional, right? Uh, when you create Git hooks, there's a little kind of hidden directory that's created, and these scripts get dropped in there. And Git looks there when events are triggered, and it says, "Do I have to kind of do anything else?" And there are a ton of hooks. When you look at the documentation, you can do hooks for all kinds of events. Today, we're just gonna talk about pre-commit. Why? Because in my mind, they're super high value. They're, they're relatively easy to manage um, and you can get a lot of kind of cleanup work out of the way and keep things bite-sized, right? Now, hooks can be written by yourself. You can write them in bash and write them in whatever, Python even, you can put them in there. Or what we're gonna talk about today is using this handy library called pre-commit that is written by Anthony Sotol and a cast of people. Um, this is a very cool library because the hooks actually are cross-platform and they're also cross-language. So we're gonna see that in a few minutes. It's not just Python. You can use it for Bash, you can use it for Docker, you can use it for C, Go, etc. So super powerful stuff. This is the URL for this thing and there's a thing on PyPI. We're gonna come back to it in a few minutes. But <clears throat> why do you care? First of all, they're helpful. It helps you keep stuff out of Git before you commit. We're gonna see how that works. And just keeping your repo tidy is super useful. You can control the kind of hooks you're putting in and the level of detail those hooks are applying. So it's very effective and it's very, very, very helpful to, uh, very easy to get started and keep it simple and just grow what you're applying the hooks to and the checks you're making as you get more comfortable or as your project complexity changes. But why do you care? You care because it automates stuff, right? And this really helps get your code quality up and builds your confidence in what's happening with your code and just keeps you more productive, right? There's nothing worse than having something fail in CI because, you know, whatever. Uh, you wanna catch all that stuff before it gets committed. My personal favorite feature about these kind of tools are that it spreads the workload out over time by keeping the problems kind of bite-sized. And we'll see that in a little bit. So a simple example, if you're doing a black formatting thing or a pilot check, you're going to be dealing with just the files that you're looking at. And you're only going to have to have to deal with those problems in a very small number of files in a very small number of places. And so it's just a lot easier to kind of keep things clean if you only have to go fix a couple of pilot problems at a time. It's much more manageable than when you have, say, hundreds of them, which can happen, right? Um, the other thing that I like is that with these tools, you can control not just which hooks you're using, but how deep they go. And we'll look later on in the talk about how you can adjust the configuration that some of your hooks use like Pilot to change kind of how much um, uh, detail it's going after, which rules are being applied and that kind of stuff. So how do they work? Simple story, you set up this pre-commit library, you do some code, you make a commit, this thing runs and tells you if it passes. That's it, that's the simple story. Uh, but what happens is when these hooks run, the first thing they do is they go look at just the files that you've touched since your last commit. And that's very helpful because it decreases the scope 
of what you're focused on to something that I think is manageable. And if any one of these checks fails, your commit doesn't go through, right? So it's not going to be there. You have to go and actually fix that and try to commit again. If it is passed, then the commit goes through as it does normally, right? So it's nice because it keeps the bad stuff, the little mistakes out of your repo, okay? Um, when commits fail, there's two ways to react. Some of your time, sometimes, and we'll see this in a moment, things will fail that Git hooks can fit, fix, like format. And in those cases, you just recommit and you're good to go. Sometimes they fail because you have to go into your code and fix that, and that's just like debugging. You go in, find the error that Pilot found, change it, recommit, and you're good. We'll show examples of both of those in a few minutes. So how do you start? <clears throat> um, well, let's look at this and maybe we'll just switch over and kind of take a look at the terminal and maybe that will bring it to life just a little bit more. Okay, so in our handy terminal, let's just see what's in here. Make sure I got some. I don't have anything in here. Okay, so I'm going to basically create a little virtual environment. Question? Can you make it bigger? Because like, I'm sitting really close and it's can I make it bigger? Uh, yeah, I can make it bigger. How about that? So I'm going to make a handy virtual environment and I'm going to activate that environment. And now I'm here and I'm going to basically do a quick git init to initialize this repo and boom, there we go. Let's see what else is here. Now. All right, so now I have this handy dot get repo uh, dot get folder that's hidden in the virtual environment and if i jump inside that oops let me do that you can see the hooks folder and that's where all those kind of hooks are going to be dumped in right all right so we've got this thing committed i'm going to do a quick pip install and what i need to install is this handy pre-commit package and i also need pilot for a little bit later so i'm going to pop that in now This should be quick, good, all right. So let's take a look at what pre-commit does. Right now, it has done nothing because we've done no configuration. But pre-commit gives you this handy little sample configuration. And so in this file that we're gonna create that will show all the configuration, we're gonna basically edit a file that looks like this. We're just gonna add rules to it. It's very kind of, straightforward and you know we can go through and control what we add in there so let's create the file now and this is called uh what the heck is this called um help if I... keep forgetting that and there we go right so we've got our pre-commit in there and now we can just run pre-commit install <clears throat> and it is now there running. So it's not gonna do anything because I have no code here whatsoever. So let's just look at what we've what we've created here. Uh, geez, I've not done any commits, shameful, right? Oh. Help if I didn't do typos. Right. So it is install and there's my new file. Come where's that slow? So then we should see something run. Okay. So here's the result. It passed obviously because I have no Python code in this repo at all. So I haven't actually had a chance to make any errors. I'm pretty sure I can do that right now in real time. Let's do that and then we'll see how some of these uh, errors pass. Um, before, I, before I get into that, I just wanna check and see uh, what my thing says. I already looked at this. All right, we'll do that, I think. Sorry, I'm just keeping my... So let's make a Python file. Uh, I'm going to put in, of course, my super doc string at the top, like we all do every time without fail, never missing one. I'm going to write a function. I'm going to call it uh, pow pow, or we can call it something else. 
I'm going to take in some uh, integer and um, I'll take in some value called x, which is a bad name for a variable. A pilot will help us fix that later. Um, and another extra. And we're just going to return something like that. Okay. Okay, so get hook ran. It failed. Why? Because I had some wrong carriage return at the end of this thing. And it fixed it, though, because it's telling me right here that the hook went through and actually fixed that file. So all, of, all I have to do in this case is run it again. Everything's passed. And we can look again and see that my first commit is there. Yay, right? So that's a victory. Right? So you can see it's pretty easy. Obviously, when you're working with bigger code bases, you get more checks happening. Um, there's a lot more going on. But basically, this is kind of the first case. Okay. So <clears throat> important note, when it failed, the check didn't happen. If all checks do pass, things get pushed. And when you look at the resources that are available to us here, if you're not in the mood to kind of learn everything you need to know about Bash and all the things you could write in Python, there's this fantastic site that Anthony and team wrote called Precommit that lists all of these hooks here. So there's a massive library. How do you add these things? Basically, if it's under this pre-existing pre-commit code repo, you can just add these things to that config YAML file, right? And it will run those checks. As I said before, there's a lot of other uh, languages and things that are covered here. And there's a lot of things that happen in Python. People have other repos with other checks, right? So you can use this kind of to find things that are useful for you and your project and where you're going and kind of layer in um, new checks to help keep your code clean as you need them or as kind of the sophistication of your kind of cleanup process is going, okay? Now, black formatting. Let's take a look at what it's like to add one of these, okay? So to add something to our config YAML is pretty simple, right? This is kind of the standard format where we list the repo to go get that. We found that on that pre-commit page if we were to go and search for black. We get the rev from, from PyPI, and we just give it a name for the hook. And to put it in our code, I'm going to cheat a little bit and copy here just because... I want to type and fat finger everything here. So let's look at our pre-commit YAML file. All I need to do to add these things in is pop in here. Paste it in and do any config that that library needs to do. All right. So obviously to make this pass with black i gotta change a file let's take a look at this python file and see if i can make a mistake here that would be caught by black it would catch some like formatting or something like that right add a pre-commit and uh make intentional error, unlike all of the other errors that I make, mm -hmm. okay? So same thing happened again, right? It went through and it went through and it found this fixed end of file thing because I must have something wrong. Um, it can't format this file because I have something wrong in my code on hmm, line four, page uh, character 28. Let's go figure out what that is, line four. Um, well, well, that's what it is. I guess it doesn't like the extra I. Mm, what did I do here? All right, well, you guys get the idea. I've got some typo on that line, and we'll, we'll fix it in, uh, in prod, okay? So pilot, another one of these kind of cool hooks you can do. I want to show pilot because there are some other capabilities when you think about how you configure uh, the tools that you use. So the add for PyLint is very similar. When you look at this repo, you can find this configuration info. And this configuration info goes into that YAML file that we've been editing. And now when you run your git commits, 
It's going to run that hook and it's going to run a pilot against the files that you've changed every single time. Now, this can be pretty powerful if you start looking at how you configure pilot right now. Pilot, usually you're putting your configuration in on pilot.ini or pyproject.toml, right? And so when you look at what those files have, you can put a lot of detail in here that really control the kinds of checks that are happening within pilot. And this can get pretty extensive, okay? So when you look at the pilot documentation, they have tons of configuration flags for almost all dimensions of Python. There's a lot of rules you can kind of go through here. Now, I know the projects use this to varying degrees, but it can be very helpful to kind of keep things clean when you have large and complex projects. So when we're taking a look at this, you can take a look at your pyproject.toml, your pilot.ini, and add these rules in here to control the depth and breadth that pilot's going out and applying those rules. So you have kind of another lever here, right? First, you can bring things in and out of uh, uh, what's getting checked with Git hooks, and then you can change the configurations for these tools to add in other things. These tools are super configurable. You can see in this case, I've even changed the message template for what's being spit out by pilot when it makes its report, which is very cool. The initial uh, vanilla one you'll see has a lot of information in it, and I just wanted to skinny it down and make it just a little bit simpler. All right, now there's a couple of things that we could talk about that kind of are useful to know, kind of tips for uh, new and experienced users alike. Sometimes you actually wanna skip your hooks. And thank you, by the way, to Moshe uh, for pointing this out to me. I also wanna thank James for taking the time to uh, look at the repo as well. So when you need to make commits without running your hooks, and you will need to do that, maybe one of your team members is getting on a plane, going into a meeting, you don't have time to clean up the pilot flags because you're a little bit messy. You just need to get it out there so they can pull it and look at it. All you need to do is make a commit with this little tag of dash dash no verify at the end. It hooks to skip everything, your stuff goes out. Now, it's not great to do that in practice over long periods of time, but it's a very handy kind of uh, tool to have in your toolkit so you can keep working. Uh, the other thing you may want to do is just do a dry run and see what the rules are going to look like. Um, before you even try to make a commit. Maybe you're still thinking about your commit message or something like that, or maybe there's a couple more changes and you just kind of want to do a status check, a health check on the changes that you've done so far. You can do things like this, kind of, okay, everything's looking good. I can keep going to the next piece of work. Uh, this is really nice, and I've done this on my projects. Uh, you can set it up so that when people clone your repo, they're actually going to have this pre-commit thing installed. Again, usually hidden folders like .git are ignored, right? And so you want to make sure that if your project is set up this way, that when people clone your repo, this kind of stuff will come down and then they can configure it and run it. But it saves you that manual step of kind of going and working with team members or new people who are pulling in your repo and saying, hey, by the way, you know, there's this actual extra manual process to deal with uh, to get this fancy pre-commit stuff working. Uh, there's some more rules and instructions here on the advanced section of this URL with pre-commit, and there's actually a lot of other things you can do. Totally recommend you go check it out if it works for you. Uh, and then finally, you know, stuff's getting updated, right? Uh, pre-commit uh, may not be in your um, uh, requirements.txt file, so you can take this command, this pre-commit auto update, and Go and see if there's anything that your uh, pre-commit library is using that needs to be changing. And it's going to go out. It's going to find the most current repos for whatever hooks you're using. It's going to pull those things in, and it's going to go back to that YAML file with the config and update it so that when people pull your repo again, they're getting kind of the most current version and stuff like that. So good to know um, and helpful to kind of keep things current. So some useful resources, things that I liked, the PyPI link is there. Precommit.com has a lot of great content on there. And all of those fancy hooks that we looked at in this big list are here. And, you know, uh, it, I do encourage you to kind of go check it out because there's a ton of stuff here that's helpful. We get stuff for Docker, we get stuff for Bash, Shell Check is kind of built in there. So there's a lot of really powerful things you can use um, outside of kind of the pure Python thing. Very, very nice. Um, so what did we learn today? 
we learned this should be on a new page, so I guess I missed a page break. Um, we learned uh, a little bit about what Git hooks are and why they're cool and powerful, and we talked about how to get started, and we also reviewed a couple of examples and saw some resources. So with that, um, I have just one more uh, request. Does anyone have any questions? The first person with a question gets this copy of PyTest by Brian Aachen. I, I could not find actually a pre-commit book, but I love PyTest and Brian's book is actually really cool. And so 